I'll give you three books that every single entrepreneur must read. That's my personal opinion. So number one is a very well-known book. Everyone knows it. The answer to the trivia question from episode one is... A bridge that spanned the Tacoma Narrow Strait of Puget Sound, Washington State, and it collapsed in 1940. Hey there. We'll get into the podcast in just a minute. However, I am looking for more great guests for the Blue Collar Voices show, and I've updated this older podcast with this announcement from November 2019. I am planning a road trip across America and including parts of Canada. I'll tell you more about both of these at the end of this podcast. Welcome, everyone, to the Blue Collar Voices Show. Today, our guest is Jacob Gutman. Jacob is a CEO of Nellet Handyman LLC. Nellet Handyman Services, the New York City area, offering a variety of handyman services. You can, of course, check out NellettHandyman.com for a list of services, coverage area, and contact information. Jacob, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about a number of different things. First, I wanted to know, how did you get started in this industry and how did Nellet get started? So I actually have another uh, business in this industry. It's a contracting business. And doing that for a few years made me realize that whenever I needed a handyman, I had a hard time getting someone to uh, to really care about the small stuff and punch lists. So that's when I decided that I'm going to do something about it. Oh, that's awesome. What's your What's your other business? The other business is a contracting business. So we do uh, renovations and uh, remodeling. And uh, as probably all the listeners know, um, and you know, when you finish a renovation, there's a thing called a punch list, which are small stuff that needs to be done and no one really wants to bother with it. And that's a real challenge for probably every every contractor or GC. And uh, that's uh, that's exactly what Nailit does. Nailit focuses on small handiwork, and we don't do any bigger stuff, no bigger projects. Okay. Well, would you like to provide a, a, a name and a phone number for that as well? The name is Home Plus. It's a real local company. We only service my town, so my county, I would say, Rockland County. Okay. Nailit, however, um, is much larger, and we're still growing it. Um, Nail it covers um, 18 different counties. So that includes uh, northern and central New Jersey, New York City, Rockland, Orange, and Westchester counties in New York. That is that is impressive. And how many how many years have you been available? When did you start? Nail it started. Uh, we started Nail it two years two years and two months. Um, so it's not, it's, we're still a new young business and growing. It sounds like you're growing pretty well. That's awesome. So where do you see Nellet going in the future? What's your overall plan? Obviously we want to franchise it at one show and covered, you know, we want, we want to service the, the entire nation, but as of right now, we're still owner operating. So, uh, we cover those 18 areas, and uh, pretty soon we're, we're working on, on, on getting it ready to franchise. That is phenomenal. So leading up to this point, were you the kind of kid that built and made things? Um, not, I'm, I would say I'm more, I'm more a business owner than a handyman myself. I'm a, I would consider myself an entrepreneur more than a handyman. So I was a creator, but not necessarily – uh, handyman or, or not necessarily, uh, I was, I wasn't busy that much, um, doing stuff that other handy men, um, are busy doing on their empty time because most people in this industry like to build stuff. And if right. they don't have a job, they'll, they'll build it for themselves. Right. I, I never owned tools. I was never busy with that stuff. I was rather busy, um, thinking of plans of building a business, um, what we sell is just the, the 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 product that we sell or the service that we sell. But my main job here in the business, and that's actually what I do, is I come up with ideas, I I solve problems, and build it up strong. Right, and and I've noticed that a lot of people that are 
creators, makers, doers, we don't really have that business mindset. We don't have that entrepreneurial thing. It's more about we focus on the product and this little thing, for instance. Exactly. That, that's exactly why um, I would say I, I have no competitor out there because most people, most blue collar entrepreneurs um, don't work on their business. They work in their business. They are busy doing the job itself. But I, uh, I, I never do a job myself. I don't have tools. Uh, I'm not, you know, I, I don't. I'm, I'm, the, my dress code is not the the blue or black or, you know, I don't wear jeans. And uh, I, I'm, I'm an office guy. I sit in an office and then I build a business. Well, that is that is totally great. The, the end result is the customer is being taken care of, and that's what matters. Exactly. So we, you've addressed on some of these types of things already in my question list. But what is the largest project Nellet will undertake? So we we consider handiwork um, as something that one guy can do in less than one day. And it doesn't have another name to it. So example, painting. Painting has a different name. It's not handiwork, it's painting. Okay. So we don't do any painting whatsoever, even if it's less than one day for one guy. And we don't do any plumbing or electricity, um, no roofing. So we do all types of general handyman work, which is light carpentry, light locksmith, uh, assembly of furniture, TV mounting, etc. And everything that can be done by one guy in less than one day, that's considered handiwork. If it's more than that, we would call it carpentry, contracting, renovation, remodeling things that we don't do. So it's almost like you do honeydew lists on steroids. Exactly. So honeydew lists is a big part of our of our business. And then we do punch lists, which is pretty much honeydew lists, but for the contractor. So right. it's, it's pretty much the same type of work, but it's a different clientele, but the work is the same. So that's, that's pretty much what we do. Or small odd and ends jobs. And we also service uh, big chain stores and banks, um, for example, Target, Starbucks, uh, Walgreens. These are all uh, companies uh, that we service and, and we still service. And in those stores, it's small, small jobs. For example, uh, hanging up a fire signature or uh, uh, some shelving or removing shelving, like real small jobs that no other contractor wants to do. And that's because they typically don't have in-house staff that's going to handle this type of thing. They never have. Okay. So you could have, say, a home builder can build a house, and rather than having uh, – basically, he would have you come in and take care of all those little small details before the home is actually complete, completely finished. Yes, and I'll give you a few examples, okay? okay. The, the, the home contractor, he's just a contractor. Um, the, the work, the entire work or most of the work gets done by subcontractors, okay? Right. So basically, uh, let's, let's take trimming. Trimming, he has a guy that sells the trimming and then installs it. But then one piece of trimming wasn't done the right way or there's a, there's a minor change. The trimming guy, um, the installer of the trimming, he is already at the next job, a $20,000 job. He doesn't want to come back for 100 or $200. It's right. not worth it. Mm -hmm. He would rather pay or discount back uh, the, the $100 or $200 to have someone else do the job so that's when we come in so that that's uh we do that with trimming uh reframing a lot of times you frame a house and then you, the customer wants a minor change let's say they want an eight uh foot door and uh, um instead of a six foot door and the framer is done out of the job doesn't want to come back that's when we come in so in a case where you would do that reframing do you come in increase the width and then completely finish it up as far as the, re the, the trim all the way around the sheetrock, everything. So that when you so usually leave... the, those changes get done before you even sheetrock. Okay. Okay. Usually. And if say somebody did want to have a larger door installed, let's say they needed to have say wheelchair access or something. Is that something you'd okay. also do? Yeah, we can do it. We can cut up a little bit of the sheetrock, take off one or two uh, of the two by fours or two by six and then reframe it and install a door. However, we won't paint it. Right. We would put the trimming back, but they will need to call a painter or paint it themselves. Okay. 
And so earlier you mentioned trim as one of your examples. And a lot of times people get specialized, like you have somebody that specializes in trim and somebody else might be a framer. How do you orchestrate all of the different personnel that you have for these particular tasks? So uh, number one, we only hire people that uh, are out of college or vocational and technical school. Usually it's uh, about 900 hours on textbook and hands-on. So this gives us, uh, uh, basically, we start off from level 80 or 90. We don't start off from zero. So, and on top of that, we give training to our guys on specific tasks that we do. We have a list of tasks that we do, and we train them how to do it. Okay. And and it may not necessarily be the only right way, but this provides consistency for your company on how that particular job is done. Exactly. And, and, and basically take in consideration that we are here to fill a gap in the market. There, there is a gap in the market that no one wants to be busy with a small stuff. And as a result of that, people, people's houses are just uh, waiting for someone to take care of the small odds and ends. We are here to fill that gap. And based on that, we train our guys to know, what they need to know in order to get those tasks done. Okay. That's, that's totally awesome. So I have this question here. Let's, let's just go ahead and take a look at it. You've talked about a lot of different things, but what are the most important things you have focused on to grow your business? Can you ask it a little bit more specific? And uh, are you asking in terms of marketing, in terms of, uh, in terms of, uh, a, a strategy of how to uh, to, to uh, get a higher quality job, or specifically on on, on what are you asking? Yet? Sure, that's that's you know that's a great uh, a great request. Let's just let's just take it for a moment. Let's just lump everything together. And if you just had to pick out the most important thing, you'd say, okay, this is really one of my key things that I would focus on to grow my business. What would that be? So. Uh... To grow the business, I would say there's two parts, which I just mentioned. There's two parts to growing the business. It's the size of the business that you want to grow, but you also want to grow the quality of basically the, 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 the core, what you, what you do and, and the reason why you're here. So the reason why we're here is because no one else, as I, as I mentioned earlier, no one else wants to take care of the small project. Okay. So in order to grow that mission, that we should be able to take care of the small projects and get a high quality job done to be on time, on budget, straightforward, etc. To grow that, we have a lot of work to do in, in, internally in the business. And that includes weekly meetings with our people, um, one-on-one training, um, counseling, etc. Part of that is what I what I mentioned that we take uh, we only hire uh, professional people that took a course in college or a vocational technical school. That's on growing our mission that we should be able to deliver it the way we want to. On the other on the other hand, we have growing the size of the business. So to grow the size, obviously, we do a ton of marketing. Um, that's one part of it. And the other part of it is, is, is uh, direct sales, which is property managers, facility maintenance, and other companies that we reach out directly and, and establish relationships so they give us the jobs. That's in terms of growing it in size. Excellent. Now, I can understand, of course, reaching out directly to property managers and those type of people. But as far as reaching a general audience, maybe maybe more of the homeowners. What's the best marketing that you've done for that? We've done a lot of marketing. I would say social media is a huge part of it. And, it, but it really, it really depends on which crowd you're targeting. And, and basically the, uh, uh, I would say it's the area. So it depends if it's an upstate or in the city that varies between local papers, newspapers, magazines, interviews, um, radio, TV ads. We've done all of that. Facebook, Instagram, Google ads, um, Google ads and Google ads is a, let, let me, let me say this. There's two types of marketing. There's one type of marketing, which is direct sales, which you put a, a, a ad out 
and that ad results in direct sales. People call you and you get jobs. And then there's another type of marketing, which is called branding, which is more of a long-term um, strategy um, to make people aware that your brand exists. So when they need a handyman, they will come to you. So we have done both. And every business owner needs to uh, create a strategy how to... Um, how to get direct sales and how to put some of his money of his budget into direct sales so he can actually turn it into sales and make a and make and make some revenue out of it so he can continue to be in business but at the same time um there there should be a little focus on the long term branding because the local the long term branding doesn't have an immediate result it doesn't bring you in money immediately however in the long term it is much cheaper because basically what it does it, it registers by people that you are the brand to use when they need your product or service and ultimately you won't need to advertise anymore because they will remember you right versus versus uh direct sales so um, basically, what is direct sales? Direct sales is an email blast with a 10% off. A direct sale is a, a mailer with a certain promotion um, or a radio ad. Um, what is um, branding? Branding is your logo coming up or your video coming up on Facebook to millions or thousands of people, uh, most of the time, if you don't have a promotion, most of the time that will be more of a branding strategy rather than direct sales. Okay. Well, those are, those are really great points. How did you become marketing aware? What was your, what was your path to this? So I always liked business and liked to listen to uh, advice of other people. So obviously, when you come to my office, there's a whole shelf full of books about all topics on business, and part of it is marketing. So I always knew a lot about marketing just because I listened a lot. And then when I started practicing what I knew and I, and I made some mistakes, I fixed those mistakes and I learned what needs to, you know, what I need to do and what I shouldn't do, where, where it's worth it to put the money in and where it's a waste of money. Um, and that's basically it. Okay. That's great. Now, the other day on LinkedIn, you had read a book and you were promoting that book, telling us how, how, what a great book it was. It was willing to fail and correct from Brian Skidmore. Yes, and so I would say that you read a lot of books and get a lot of information, who would be some of the other people that you have read, that you have learned from, that you get motivation from, and education? I'll give you three books that every single entrepreneur must read. That's my personal opinion. So number one is a very well-known book. Everyone knows it. It's The E-Myth Revisited from Michael Gerber. That's a must-read for every single entrepreneur. The second must-read is... Antral Leadership from Dave Ramsey, which is, uh, it's a, uh, I would say also a must. It's, it's, uh, let me tell you the difference and what they, what those books cover. The E-Myth from Michael Gerber is basically uh, an understanding, a deep understanding how structure, how a business should be structured. It does not give you specific um, tasks or principles or certain things that you need to do in your business. It only gives you a very strong understanding how a business needs to be structured. Dave Ramsey's book, Entry Leadership, is a guide on day-to-day -day operation. He guides you on every single thing that goes on in your business, starting from hiring, firing, um, treating your employees, the financials, like every single single thing that you uh, do in your business, you have guidance in that book. The third very important book to read is Profit First from Mike Michalowicz. I highly recommend uh, reading that book. It's basically how to structure your financials so you should actually make profit. There's a, a lot of small businesses that um, are struggling, and that's very true. Um, I've seen it 
personally and many business people that come to me and talk and, and friends. Um, that book is very, very, very important. That is, those are three great recommendations. I've not heard of the third one. I actually have downloaded the first two. I just haven't read them yet. I've read a lot of other books, but I will definitely be adding those two to my list as far as order of precedence. Well, that is that is good information. As, as you've ran your business, have you had any particular struggles you'd like to cover? Anything that, that just was just frustrating that you had to work through, but you overcame and now you're better for it? I, I I mentioned this already, but I'm gonna I'm gonna cover it a little bit uh, deeper. So basically, I mentioned before that we only hire people that uh, took a course in construction and vocational or technical school. That wasn't so from day one, and uh, we struggled a lot on that. I always knew that I from day one I knew that I want to have the highest quality jobs done with our company, and especially uh, people need to understand with uh, with construction or remodeling. Etc. The, the person, your customer, the person that buys your product or service, they don't know what they're going to get. So when they buy, they don't see what they're buying. They buy on trust. Right. And the same is with you. When you sell, you don't know what you sell. You sell based on vision, based on imagination. Okay? When you buy something in the store, you see something on the shelf, you see the product, you see what it is, you see the price, you buy it, you take it home. It's very simple and easy. But as I said, with construction, it's very difficult. Taking that in consideration, it's very important to deliver a high quality job because you never know the expectations of the customer and you want to satisfy every customer. So I always knew that I want to be able to deliver a high quality job. But when we first started, I hired people. And how do I know if they do a good job? I look on their resume. I ask them if they have experience. And if they have experience and I call their previous uh, employer and they give good, good, good information and I hear good things about them, then we hire them because we think they're good and we, we believe they're good. But the matter of the fact is that everyone says that they're good, but not everyone is really very good. And not, not everyone has that much experience and even the people that have some experience in one area of the business and one let's say they know trimming or they know furniture assembly then they won't know framing and uh, uh, and all the techniques of uh installation of windows and doors i wanted to get people that really know this know what they're doing and understand so it took us a long way until i figured out um that taking people out of college would be a good plan. And then we had a very hard time uh, establishing relationships with the, uh, with the career services from those colleges. So basically how it works, every college has an office called career services. The reason of the existing of that office is because they want, they want to be able to tell future um future students that uh, come to my college because 98% of my of our students get a job in the first 90 days. So that's why they have uh, office career services and they're busy finding jobs for uh, their graduates. So basically, um, there's a lot of colleges and a lot of courses, but in construction, there's not many. Not There's a, a total of uh, four in the entire 18 counties that we service. There's only four um, four construction, uh, four colleges that offer construction uh, classes, and this year only three of those colleges actually had the class. One didn't have the class because they didn't have enough people to sign up. So we had three colleges that that gave courses on that, and there's so much construction going on. So it's very hard to find real good people. So the very hard thing was to create um, and establish a very good relationship with the people in the career service uh, department and make sure that we get the best people. Uh, that This was one of our big challenges. Well, that's, I, I can understand that. So you had to work and sell to make sure you had a good pipeline so you could grow your business. And one of the things that I've been reading about is that the job market, it's very hard to find people that's working in the construction industry. 
what do you see as long term? Is this the the right kind of career for people to go into? Will it be rewarding? Will it be financially uh, viable for somebody to to target this industry to raise a family? It obviously depends how you do it. Um, there are people in construction that make millions, um, and some can't uh, make ends meet. So uh, it really depends how you approach it and what you do. On the other hand, the people that are blue collar and like handy and you know any type of construction, uh, they have a passion for their work. Um, it's something that you get. I would say you get born with it. If you like tools, that we have some, we provide our vans and tools, but some of our people ask permission to bring their own tools because it's their baby. They have a passion to work with their tools. Um, I, I, I didn't see this passion in any other industry um, other than construction. The people that do construction, they love what they do. Um, so the, your question is, uh, if someone should take this career, such type of career, obviously, if you have a passion to it, do it. But make sure to do it the right way so you can make a living out of it. Okay. And that brings up a good point. How would they do that to make a good living? What would be the best process for them? So first, they want they need to determine whether they should be employ, an employee or employer. They should own their own business or they should work for someone else. And then they need to uh, obviously make sure that they, we know that and they know that they have the passion for it, but they need to make sure they're good at it and they can get a high quality job done. Most times, those people that can hi- get it, that, that can do a high quality job, they will get much better paid jobs. On the other hand, if someone has the proper skills to go in business for themselves and they think that they can build it up and scale that they should be able to uh, make a fortune or at least some nice money from it, um, then they should try to do that. Definitely. All right. Well, that is great, Jacob. I really appreciate you you taking the time to, to be on the show and I'm glad that you're succeeding and I'll be watching you on LinkedIn before we, before we get off of here. Is there anything else that you'd like to say? Yeah, it was just great being on the show and, uh, uh, thanks for having me. And if you have a question, call me, reach out to me. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm, it's very easy to get in touch with me. So, uh, to all of you out there who listen to the show, if you have any questions, if you want my advice, I'm here to help. Uh, Jacob Gutman on LinkedIn. You can, uh, email me, Jacob at nailerhandyman.com. And if you are in our cover coverage areas and you want to use our service, our number is 855-562-4548, which is 855-5-NAIL-IT. Or you can email jobs at nailithandyman.com. That is awesome. I will definitely be providing show notes that includes all this information. And thank you so much, Jacob. Thank you, John. Take care. Today's trivia question is, at what temperature does steel become glowing red hot? On our next show, you and I get to chat with Nathan Toomey. Here is a little snippet from our talk. Well, originally I worked with my father uh, throughout the summers uh, doing construction work. And I had three older brothers that uh, were in the construction business themselves. And, of course, being the youngest of that group, uh, I kind of got all the gopher jobs. So I decided that I wanted to try something different, and I went to work for a glass company here in the local area, and I was only his his only one employee for, oh, about three or four years, and at the age of 14 is when I actually started in the glass business. Hey guys, before you go, two things. The first is, I'm looking for more great guests for the Blue Collar Voices show. Basically, I'm looking for those that excel in the blue collar arena and have actually got their hands dirty, truly understanding what it is like to do the work. I realize this is an older podcast, but I'm updating this podcast in November 2019 for the announcement of an upcoming road trip. Phase one is building a list of locations to visit. Some locations will be just a meet and greet. Others will be on-site audio and or video. Please check out the website for more information. I'd love to hear from you. 
Email me at John C at bluecollarvoices.com. You can also hit me up on LinkedIn. Thanks all. Looking forward to hearing from you. Blue Collar Voices is produced by John Chapman and all audio, video, graphics are created and edited by John Chapman. Blue Collar Voices is a DR7 Media production. I'll be back. <laughs>